Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. This is the welcoming event to kick off the official weekend, the inauguration events that will entertain 
and teach all leading up to the momentous occasion of having our 46th president of the United States, Joe Biden, sworn in, along with the first woman vice president, Madam Vice President Kamala Harris. My name is Christelle Alonzo, and it is an honor and privilege to be here with everybody tonight. I can't hide my feelings. I'm very excited to be here. And hearing the Revival Chorus Choir sing and the Girl Scouts do the Pledge of Allegiance, it gives me a feeling of hope. Hope that things are about to change with a message of unity and connecting with people. I can't tell you what an honor it is for me to be here tonight because I am a first generation Mexican American, daughter of immigrants, grew up in a mixed status family. Spanish is my first language and it is an honor for me to be part of the events today. This is the beginning of the next chapter of this country now, I want to tell you all, right now, remember the feeling that you feel right now, at this moment. And remember, change is possible. We proved that this past November. I have worked on so many elections where we talk to so many people, and you always see those voters that say, why should I vote? It's only one, vo it's only one vote. It's only one voice. What can we do? What's one thing, one vote going to change? We proved that change is possible with the one vote. One vote with another vote, with another vote, we create change. And before I continue, I also want to say, a mi familia, mi comunidad latina, es un placer estar aquí con ustedes. Uh, es, estoy tan agradecida la oportunidad. Nosotros fuimos a votar en esta elección pasada en, en noviembre y e hicimos cambio y por eso quiero decirles gracias por votar, representar y hacer el cambio necesario. I want to speak in Spanish because that's what the United States of America is. It's a melting pot, a true melting pot of different diversities, ethnicities. This is the country that we are here to represent and take into a new direction. So having said that, welcome. And I wanna get this, I wanna get this program started because we've got a lot of ground to cover. And I have, I have, uh, I have the opportunity to introduce our first guest. Uh, Deborah Ann Holland is an American politician who has been the US representative from New Mexico's first congressional district since 2019. The district includes most of Albuquerque along with most of its suburbs. Holland is a former chairwoman of the Democratic Party of New Mexico. Please help me welcome Congresswoman Deb Holland. To represent New Mexico's first congressional district as one of the first Native American women elected to Congress and a member of the Laguna Pueblo. Today we come to you from Washington, D.C., which is the indigenous homelands of the Nacochtank, Anacostan, Piscataway people. We acknowledge the legacy of this land's original inhabitants and find inspiration from the lands and the waters. We recognize that our country was built on indigenous land and we pay tribute to the indigenous nations who have stewarded these lands, these waters and animals for centuries and who have made great sacrifices in the building of our country. And now I would like to introduce Claudette White of the Katsan tribe. And I want to thank former councilman Preston Arrow Weed for his teachings and his willingness in bringing this song to us today. Mrs. White is a person of many talents and thank you so much for your song from the Katsan and the Kumeyaay tribes. Today, she joins us to share a traditional song to welcome you all to the 59th presidential inauguration. Please join me in welcoming Claudette White. Hello from the Fort Yuma Quetzal Indian Reservation. On behalf of my tribal nation, I would like to congratulate President-elect Biden and Vice President-elect Harris for their historic win. I would also like to thank both of them for their commitment to upholding the U.S. trust responsibility to tribal nations and our sacred lands. 
with the promise to restore lands and protect the natural cultural resources within them. Thank you. I couldn't find a better way to start this program officially than with a tribute, with a nod to the indigenous community that is part of this country because they were here all along and they have been and they are part of the community. And I love seeing that personally because so many of us come from indigenous roots and it's always nice to see the recognition that they deserve. Thank you so much. That was great. That was amazing. And this program, that's what it's about. It's actually showing what this country is made of, who it is made of. And I got to tell you that right now uh, we've seen that what was happen what happened in November, the change, our president, our new president happened because of different groups. And this is what we're going to focus on next. I would love to kick it over so that you can hear a few words from some women's groups from around the country, from anywhere from like the Women's March to Emily's List. We could not have gotten to where we are today without the hard work of these folks. And I want you all to hear from them directly. Hello, my name is Ashanti Gullar, and I'm the president of Emerge, the nation's premier organization that recruits and trains Democratic women to run for office. As we prepare for the swearing in of President-elect Joe Biden and Vice President-elect Kamala Harris, we all feel a great sense of hope knowing that the incoming administration will be squarely focused on the needs of the American people. We owe much of this moment to the power and resiliency of women, especially women of color, who propel our democracy forward and push for America to live up to its full potential. 
As the first woman ever elected vice president, Kamala Harris is part of a long and storied tradition of women who have broken barriers and opened doors so that others can follow. While we celebrate this new chapter, we also know there is still so much at stake. The pandemic rages on, families are in need of economic relief, and racial injustice remains a threat to the country. The Biden-Harris administration has a mandate from voters to do what is necessary to fix the biggest problems facing our nation, and I look forward to working alongside them to get the job done. United and with strong leadership in the White House, we can build a brighter future for all of us. Thank you. As we step into this new era of a Biden-Harris administration, we are especially thrilled at Emily's List to celebrate the shattering of one of the highest glass ceilings with the election of Vice President Kamala Harris. Along with President Joe Biden, she was elected in a year when Americans turned out to vote and make their voices heard in record numbers. And now we join with all of them to watch history being made by a woman we've been proud to know and support for years. A woman who brings the experience and compassion to build this nation back better, who is making it possible for young women and girls all across the country and the world to see themselves at the highest seats of power and who one day make their own history. That's the power of Kamala Harris, our Madam Vice President. My name is Brittany Yancey, a professor, historian, and a proud member of Higher Heights. I know that Black women lead from Sojourner Truth to the women inspired by Charlie Chisholm's legacy. My work to organize my family, friends, sorority, and neighbors to vote, run, win, and lead is fueled by the Black women who came before me. Charlie Chisholm once said, I have faith in America. That is the work that is before us. And we are one step closer when Vice President-elect Kamala Harris steps into her story. But we each have a role to play. And I stand ready to rebuild an America we can believe in and move it to higher heights. Hi, I'm Elise Hogue. I'm the president of NARAL Pro-Choice America. And I could not be more proud and honored to be here representing our 2.5 million members nationwide coming together to collectively celebrate this historic day in history. The inauguration of President Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris closes a chapter, one of the darkest in this nation's history. But even more, it pretends such a bright future with the historic taking of office of the first woman vice president and an incredible woman of color at that. This country needs Kamala Harris's experience, perspective and wisdom more than ever. And we will always have her back. Thank you, Madam Vice President, for always fighting for us. We will always fight for you. Now has been the grassroots organizing arm of the women's movement since our founding. Their community organizing now met with women, heard their personal stories, visited detention centers, helped raise for supplies, and launched a petition drive demanding legislation be passed that would provide dignity to families and end the separation of families under the Trump administration. And this election alone lets us know that community organizing is the backbone to our democracy. Good afternoon. As President-elect Joe Biden often reminds us, we face a battle for the soul of our nation. The soul of our nation is our democracy and the core promises it was built on. Freedom, justice, equality, equity, and opportunity. But the reality is, for much of our history, people of color and women were not allowed to participate in this great experiment called a democracy. In fact, we were afterthoughts. The last four years, and certainly the last two weeks have shown us, we still have a long way to go. But they've also shown us who we can be. And our next vice president, Kamala Harris, represents the very best of who we can be. Yes, she will make history, not just for her first, but for the bold policies that she's gonna champion. She will fight for reproductive freedom, racial justice, health equity, and economic opportunity. 
and we will be right beside her because she's always been there for all of us. Every immigrant, every Black or Indigenous person, every Latino, Asian or Pacific Islander, every woman, every trans or non-binary person, we know. We know this country wasn't built for us, but we pay it no mind because we are the ones who will finally fulfill its promise to be a land where everyone is free. And Vice President Kamala Harris will lead us there. Nothing can snatch that joy. So congratulations, Madam Vice President. Amanda Brown Learman here. I am a voter, a mom, an advocate, and a proud member of the supermajority. We are a multiracial and intergenerational community of women united in our resolve to fight for an America where women are truly equal. And I'm just so excited that we now have Joe Biden and Kamala Harris who believe in that America too. Our theory of change is all about organizing because women are just natural organizers. Even if that's not the word that every woman would use to uh, describe the work that she does in her community every single day, it is the superpower of women. And this election, women in our community made phone calls. They sent text messages, millions of them. Um, they sent letters encouraging more women to vote. And we showed up and we turned out. And now we get to celebrate. We're celebrating Joe Biden and we're celebrating the victory that is Kamala Harris, the first Black South Asian woman vice president. And that just feels good to say. I'm grateful to the ancestors to the organizers, to the volunteers who made today possible. I'm excited for the leadership and dynamic duo that is Joe Biden and Kamala Harris and for the change I know that they're gonna bring. And I'm really hopeful just because what it means to the children and what my two little girls included, they're gonna grow up seeing a woman who looks like them in the White House and finally be able to trust that this White House puts people first. Since 2017, women's marches all across the country have demonstrated the power of everyday women. We owe our strength to the women who came before us and demanded more, and to women of color who are the backbone of the progressive movement. We march for one purpose, and that is to build the political power of women for a better future. Women are the soul and the future of this country, and we are just getting started. I love that video. Um, I have to say that four years ago, I was at the Women's March in Washington, DC, uh, not knowing what to do. And I decided to organize just like the women said. And also we talked about women of color. And I wanna take this moment to specifically say thank you to black women for the work the organizing work that you did, not only this election, but you, you think you have done in the past, and I know you will continue to do in the future. You deserve a shout out. I wanted to do that because thank you, <laughs> obviously. That video is great. I'm really loving this. I don't know about you, but every time that I see a video, I just feel very um, inspired, motivated. I feel moved, and I honestly wasn't expecting to feel it on this level, but uh, such is life. <laughs> um, let's keep this program going. Our next guest uh, is Nick Dodani from Netflix's Atypical. He's a great actor who's just getting started. Please, Nick, uh, we would love to hear from you right now. It's Nick Dodani here coming at you from the Arizona desert. It's finally the new year, which means it's finally time for the new president. On January 20th, I am so excited to watch Joe Biden and Kamala Harris become the next president and vice president of these United States. I know we use this word a lot nowadays, but this is truly a historic moment for our country as we welcome the new Biden-Harris administration. No matter what part of the country or world we're from, no matter who we are, what we believe, or who we love, this inauguration is for all of us, for our health, our planet, our rights. In normal times, we would be getting ready to watch the swearing in with a big group of family or friends or even out on the town in DC with a bunch of strangers. But just because we can't celebrate together in a big crowd doesn't mean we can't celebrate from wherever we are. And yes, it might feel strange to celebrate right now. 
given where we are, still under the crush of this pandemic, our political divisions raw. But we must find time to celebrate at least a little bit over the next few days because change is coming. We got to find time to hope. Thank you so much for that, Nick. This is uh, this next guest. I actually have to tell you that I have worked with her uh, for a while, off and on, for years. Um, she's a friend. She's a great leader. Please help me in welcoming um, Janet Murguya, President of Unidos U.S. Hi, Janet. We haven't talked in a while. <laughs> I hope I get to see you soon. Hello, I'm Janet Murguia, President and CEO of Unidos US, the nation's largest Latino advocacy and civil rights organization. I'm so proud of the role we and many others, including a host of Latina leaders, played in making this day possible. The work to get out the vote by women of color in this election was groundbreaking and decisive. That is why it was so deeply disheartening and enraging to see a mob of violent extremists incited by President Trump attempt to overturn a fair and certified election. It was an ugly day and low moment for our country, but it reaffirms something very important. This country's promise as a beacon of multiracial, multi-ethnic democracy cannot be taken for granted. It takes hard work to fulfill. It requires leadership that sees the best days of this country are ahead of us. To get on that path to a brighter day, we have to work together. And women of color are leading the way and saying, it's our time. In Georgia, Stacey Abrams and other Black women and women of color did the difficult work of getting people to vote. Last November, we saw Latina leaders in our Unidos U.S. affiliate network bring their communities to the polls and make a difference in states like Arizona, Nevada, Pennsylvania. All of their efforts have made this new day possible. More than 73% of Hispanic women voted for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. We look forward to working with President-elect Biden, who recognizes that our nation's diversity makes us strong. And we are so proud to hail Kamala Harris as our nation's first woman and first woman of color vice president. She's a leader who is also significantly a daughter of immigrants. Her story is our story. It's an American story, and it's my story. Growing up in Kansas City, Kansas, my family experienced the American dream firsthand. My parents, who immigrated from Mexico in the 1950s, taught my six siblings and me the value of hard work, the importance of giving back, sacrifice, and standing up for ourselves, and the belief in achieving our own American dream. I brought those values with me all the way to the White House, where I served under President Bill Clinton. It was a difficult but energizing experience. I learned that when we work together, our diverse experiences and backgrounds can bring about powerful change. President Clinton knew this. And it's an example I know President-elect Joe Biden will follow. He understands it's important to build bridges between communities that have been pitted against each other. There is much tough work ahead of us, but we know that women of color and women can help to lead the way. Let's take time to celebrate all that we have already achieved. It is a brighter day in America, thanks to so many women of color who helped to make it happen. Muchísimas gracias y adelante. The 700,000 federal and D.C. government workers represented by my union, AFGE, 
I understand just how important the historical victory of President Biden and Vice President Harris truly is. And we're proud to congratulate you on your inauguration. AFG members dedicate their lives to public service, swear an oath to uphold the Constitution. And I've been on the front lines of this pandemic, providing America's essential government service. We are ready for serious leadership to help build back better, to address the most prescient issues facing working families in America, and to do our part to support the most pro-union administration in history. Hi, my name is Josette Jaramillo. I'm a lead caseworker with the Pueblo County Department of Human Services and a member of AFSCME Local 1335 and Council 18. Throughout this pandemic, we've seen public employees step up in a real way to keep their communities safe. We've continued doing the work that we've always done throughout this pandemic, but this time it carried a little more risk. We've risked our own health and safety and the health and safety of our families to do so. I think that it's become more clear than ever that workers need a voice on the job and a seat at the table. We've been able to create some really big wins to keep ourselves and our communities safe through our unions. We've had a voice on the job, we've had a seat at the table, and we've been able to create some really big wins. So I'm really excited and really proud of the work that we've done across the country. I'm excited for a Biden-Harris administration because I think they're gonna prioritize the work that we're, do we're doing. I think that they're gonna prioritize public employees. I think they're gonna prioritize workers' rights and make it easier to join a union if that's what we want. So I'm really excited today for the inauguration. And I'm excited uh, to help build back our economies. We can't do that without taking care of the frontline heroes who have been um, out there doing their normal jobs throughout this pandemic. So I'm really excited about that. And I think together we can build back America better. Hello, my name is Sonia Witten and I'm a proud AFSCME member. I also have the honor of serving as the vice president of AFSCME Local 4041 here in Nevada. I'm excited about this Biden-Harris administration. I firmly believe that this administration will work diligently to improve labor laws, allowing workers to have a right to form, organize and form unions at their work site and thereby have collective bargaining rights. I also firmly believe that this, or this administration will continue to prioritize making sure that state, county, local and federal municipalities have the access to funds so that communities can provide the services that are needed so that we can all recover more quickly from this pandemic. I know that Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, our president and vice president, firmly understand and respect the value of a strong middle class and workers earning a livable wage. Congratulations, President Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris. AFT members have been on the front lines, protecting, feeding, educating, healing, and comforting. They care, fight, and show up every day for the people of America. They and all Americans deserve the freedom to thrive. That is a bedrock principle of America's labor movement. Thank you, President-elect Biden and Vice President-elect Harris for your bold agenda to build back better to improve the lives of Americans by overcoming this pandemic, transforming the economy so it works for everyone, confronting our divisions and ultimately bringing us together so every person in America has the freedom to thrive. The 1.7 million members of the AFT are all in. Enshrined in the Constitution, our public postal service has united the country for generations. Dedicated postal workers connect all of us with distant greetings, life-saving medicine, mail-in ballots, and so much more, even during this tragic pandemic. Good jobs, strong unions, and quality public services are key to the health of our communities and are at the heart of building back better. Let's grow our unions and protect and expand the public postal service, our national treasure. My name is Adonis Brevard, and I'm a proud member of CWA Local 3204 in Atlanta. My co-workers and I helped turn out the vote to flip Georgia blue. Our union started in the telephone industry. We built and supported our national telephone network 
connecting our country and negotiating for wages and health care to create a stronger middle class. CWA grew to include workers from many different occupations. Together, we fight for good, family supporting jobs, to stand up against oppression, and do our work to sustain our communities. We're looking forward to working with President Biden and Vice President Harris to connect all Americans to broadband, help our country recover from the pandemic, and to ensure that all workers have the freedom to join together in a union to improve their workplace and their communities. The International Association of Firefighters have fought to improve the working conditions and health and safety of our members for more than a century. With Joe Biden, Kamala Harris in the White House, we know our successes are not constrained by the past. We know that with a president and vice president who understand the value of organized labor, who have our backs, we'll build better lives and livelihoods for all working people across our great nation. On behalf of our 324,000 union firefighters, paramedics, and EMTs, congratulations, President Biden and Vice President Harris. We look forward to building a better future with you. The electrical industry has changed a lot since the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers was founded 129 years ago. But the IBEW has always been prepared to change with it. As proud as we are of our history, we stand ready for the future. Training our apprentices for the careers of tomorrow and instilling a commitment to excellence unparalleled in our industry. I'm Carrie James, a journeyman electrician from IBEW Local 26 in Washington, D.C. I'm honored to represent the 775,000 brothers and sisters of our great union and congratulating President Biden and Vice President Harris. We're your partners and we're ready to build back better. Let's get to work. We are growing again in strength, in confidence, and in unity. The fighting machinists are back. My voice is the voice that guides you home safely each and every day. 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Am I highly trained professional, given the trust of the flying public to get them to their destination safely? I am proud of my profession and the quality of my work. I must be 100%, 100% of the time. I am a professional air traffic controller. Congratulations. President Biden, Vice President Harris, we look forward to working with you in a collaborative manner to build the best aviation system for the future. On behalf of the three million members of the National Education Association, America's largest labor union, we congratulate President-elect Joe Biden and Vice President-elect Kamala Harris on their historic inauguration. And we are thrilled to have the amazing Dr. Jill Biden, an educator and longtime NEA member, as our First Lady. We all believe in the promise of this nation. And America's educators look forward to partnering with President Biden to take on the challenges we face and to create a better America for we, the people, all of us. So let's take this time to celebrate this amazing victory and then let's get to work. Richard Fiesta Alliance for Retired Americans, Union Retirees. I'll wait for three. Union members may retire from work, but not from activism. It was union retirees who were the grassroots force behind the 1965 creation of Medicare, a tough multi-year campaign. Now, 61 million Americans can rely on Medicare. Union retirees are ready to join President Biden to strengthen Medicare and all retirement security, to keep Medicare strong and lower prescription drug prices, so that after a lifetime of work, a secure, dignified retirement awaits. We can't wait to get started. We shouldn't have to worry about if our water is safe or how we can get food to the table or who's going to take care of my children or how am I going to take care of myself? I want a better infrastructure. Better healthcare. 
Tener derecho a educación. Affordable housing for everyone. Better job security. Fair immigration laws. I want someone that's going to take charge, someone that has the experience and that can fight for us. I'm old. I'm way older than I ever wanted to be. And, and I mean, here we are. And I need to know that you're concerned with my paycheck and my health insurance. That's what affects me. No matter your skin color, your race, or where you come from, or your ethnic background. We need change. I am supporting Joe Biden. I'm supporting Joe Biden. Because Joe Biden gets it. He believe in unions. He believe in the fight for 15. He cares about people. And that's the person we need in office. I'm Jim Hoffa, president of the Teamsters Union. President-elect Biden and Vice President-elect Harris have always stood with the middle class and working families. And today, the Teamsters Union, America's strongest union, stands with them at this historic moment. Together, we're going to build back better and build back stronger. Congratulations. In this historic time in our nation, I'm so pleased to speak to my brothers and sisters who worked so hard to protect one another this past year, to protect this nation and to bring a labor-friendly administration to the White House. Joe Biden has been a friend to the UAW and labor since his earliest days in public service, and Kamala Harris, the nation's first biracial vice president, was there when we needed her on the picket lines and in her voting record. This is a time to heal our nation and to recommit ourselves as working men and women to come together and restore America to the country we all need and want it to be. God bless America in solidarity. The United Food and Commercial Workers are keeping America going during this pandemic. We're keeping grocery shelves stocked so you can bring home food to your family. We are protecting and powering our nation's food supply chain. We're nursing and taking care of your loved ones. And we're getting our country back on track with the COVID-19 vaccine. We're proudly working at the front lines for America's communities, taking care of your family and taking care of each other. Mr. President, on behalf of the Steelworkers Union, we want to congratulate you and the Vice President on your campaign and your election, and we look forward to working with you. you know, as you know, our relationship with you and our union goes back many years, and your friendship and loyalty have been important to us through all those years. We look forward to begin the work of rebuilding our infrastructure, rebuilding our manufacturing base, and bringing good union-paying jobs to all Americans across the country. So again, you have our congratulations and our friendship, and we're ready to go to work with you. Hello, everybody. It's so great to hear from all of the organizations, especially the labor unions. Thank you so, so much for making sure that all the workers are treated with respect and seen as equals. Thank you so much for that. Our next guest, I'm very excited to introduce. And actually, I want to tell you just a quick little story about her. I co-hosted The View with her, and she became a good friend of mine. One day, she told me two things that I've always carried in my heart, and I always think of it as two of the most important lessons I've ever learned. One is you never know what you can get if you don't ask. I remember her saying, you got to ask to get stuff. What's the worst that they can do? Say no. And I thought, you're right. <laughs> and the second one was, don't wait for opportunities to happen. Start working on them. Do them yourself. Don't let others tell you that you can't do it. If you want to do it, find a way to do it. I love that. And I love her. So help me welcome an amazing actress, singer, producer, and EGOT winner. It's the one and only Whoopi Goldberg. 
Hey everybody, it's Whoopi Goldberg here, and I am so excited to be with you to kick off this year's inaugural activities and usher in a new era, thank goodness, for our country. This year has been a challenging one for many of us, but we should feel optimistic tonight for a very important reason. The reason is, in the face of these unprecedented challenges, I trust President-elect Biden and Vice President-elect Harris I think they'll be able to lead us through whatever we're going to be facing. On January 20th, I am truly excited to watch Joe Biden and Kamala Harris become the next president and vice president of the United States. And the best part of this is that everyone is invited. Yeah, everybody. This year's inauguration is taking place in living rooms across the country. I'm especially looking forward to Kamala Harris making history as she becomes the first woman first African-American and the first Asian-American vice president. This is such a historic moment for our country as we come together and welcome the new Biden-Harris administration. And just because we can't be together in person doesn't mean we can't unite around a national purpose wherever we are. Listen, everybody knows there's a lot of work to be done. So let's take a moment today and unite because by working together, it's possible we can restore the soul of America, bring the country together, build a better path towards the future. I'm thrilled to introduce President-elect Biden and Vice President-elect Kamala Harris. And thank you both so much for sharing your message of hope and laying out your vision and plans to beat the pandemic, build back our economy better, and unify our country. And to all the people watching from home, thank you for joining us. No matter who you are, where you come from, what you look like, what you believe, who you love, this inauguration is about all of us. Thank you for your support. Thank you for being part of this unprecedented moment in history. We can't do this without you. Thank you, Whoopi. I love you. We all love Whoopi. <laughs> Our next performance comes from the 2021 Colon Project. Let's take a look. A few months ago, I was introduced to a colon, which is a South Indian geometric pattern of dots and lines. And we connected that to Kamala Harris's heritage and learned about its energy and the energetic welcome that it provides. We recognized that this would be a really great opportunity for a lot of people in America to participate in a cultural offering. Each of the dots in a column represents obstacles and the lines around it are the way we flow. So we asked people to make a tile at home using paper and recycled campaign signs or just simply cardboard and put a little bit of themselves into coloring around the dots. We've had an incredible response in terms of participation from the DC public schools to yoga groups, to five-year-old Savitha, all the way to 95-year-old Rukmani Anti. It's been an extraordinary community experience and a collective offering. Inauguration Column 2021 is a way for us to provide a different kind of energy for a new administration. Kolam is a traditional art form from Tamil Nadu in South India. Women draw them on the floor outside their houses using powdered rice or rock. These geometric patterns consisting of dots and lines are a symbol of welcome and also a reminder to enter the house with positive energy. Kolams are ephemeral as they are walked over and wiped away making way for a new kolam the next day. Personally, I find drawing columns very meditative. They have been my constant guide, helping me find solutions to many of life's challenges. Here is a quick lesson on columns. We will start with the basics and work our way up in complexity. Columns can be visual expressions of many life lessons. One such idea is that the dots represent obstacles in life and weaving around them while maintaining a symmetry teaches you how to deal with real life challenges. To give you an idea of the scale of the column installation, you can compare the seven dot column to the 47 dot column, extending to about 60 feet in length. A 
47 dot column means 1,149 tiles. That's thousands of stories that we're going to weave together into a quilt-like ground cover somewhere in DC. Folks from around the world have been asking how they can be a part of this. So we're also doing a digital photo mosaic column. All you have to do to be a part is submit your picture with a column at 2021column.com. We get a lot of unbelievably beautiful tiles, but the heart of this project is about the spirit and the stories of the people who participated. We had stories of joy and learning, kids finding ways to reinvent the column in art class, or tying in history lessons about the Underground Railroad in their tile designs. We heard stories of healing. A woman lost her father to COVID a few weeks before she sat down to design her tiles. And she put all of that love and that grief and those memories of her father into her designs, and she found it therapeutic. Now, this woman was a stranger to me, but after we talked and I hung up, I just wept both at her loss, but also the beauty of this moment of connection. We hope it's clear that this project isn't about politics or about a political victory. It transcends that. I'm a Tamil mother raising two bicultural daughters in the US, and it's hard at times. But to realize that there's gonna be a woman called Kamala Devi in the White House, and that there's a giant collaborative column that thousands of people we're a part of is so moving. You know, it resonates not just because part of my cultural story is being represented, but it's also about opening the door to have more and more stories heard. And for many of us, that is one of the most beautiful parts of the promise of America. Thank you. That was beautiful. Thank you, Colin Project. That was amazing to see. Um, our next guest is actually a stand-up comedian, as am I. So I am very excited to introduce her from one stand-up comedian to the next. Our next performer is a comedian that has something quite special in common with President-elect Biden. They have both dealt with stuttering. Let's hear what Nina G has to say. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the stage, Nina G. My name is N N N N N N N Nina G and I am the San Francisco Bay Area's only <laughs> female stuttering stand-up comic. And clap for that mom and dad, thank you. My parents, America, K K Kathy and Jerry. So I am so happy to be here and to be p p part of this. I'm filming this at the a Alameda C Comedy Club. And I was born here in Alameda. And for the past almost 20 years, I have lived in Oakland, C C California, where Vice President, or soon to be Vice President H Harris it, 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 is from and between the stuttering and between Oakland, I think I should be invited to pretty much everything. Like everything at the White House, I expect an invitation. Not the boring stuff though. So, uh, and I'm really excited about Jill Biden because I am Italian American like her and also I went to K community college and she is a great advocate for that system. But I wanna go on, uh, on record now, I will not be calling her first lady. I will be calling her doctor first lady. Right, mom, you were mad at that. My mom was uh, mad because of that whole doctor thing, especially when she found out that Dr. Jill is Italian. So. The other thing that I got to do over the summer was there were a lot of a ADA c c celebrations. The Americans with t t Disabilities Act turned the, the 30 and I got to do some cool shows online. Now, there were some people who told me that stuttering and dyslexia, because I also have that, that those aren't real 
disabilities. So I told them that if you look at the definition of what a disability is, according to the ADA, it's a physical or mental impairment that substantially results in having to deal with jerks. <laughs> so that's right. I'm pretty sure it qualifies. You know that I usually switch it up and put another word, but I'm trying to be classy here, Dad. I'm trying to be classy for the inauguration. So the other thing that happens when you stutter or when you have any kind of disability is that as soon as someone meets you, they magically and suddenly have a PhD in the thing you have. <laughs> oh my God, the advice, the advice all the time. It's always things like just slow down and breathe. Are you breathing? Breathe. And you know, in the 40 years I've been stuttering, I've never thought of that. So thank you. <laughs> thank you. I guess I've been breathing this entire time. And when I go into groups, what I do is I t t t t tell them, uh, I stutter and you're just gonna have to wait for all of my brilliant ideas. And that's my way to advocate, it's my way to disclose. It's also my, what I think is a very charming way of telling them to shut the heck up. So that also, <laughs> it also works there too. Thanks, Dad. Um, the other, and, and, and I learned that. I learned that from the SIS family. That stands for the family of people who stutter. We are only 1% of the population, 1%. So when we meet each other, it's very, very special. And for me growing up, I, I didn't have a whole lot of role models who stuttered. The one that was most accessible to me was a cartoon pig who didn't wear pants. I mean, <laughs> I mean, he did kind of predict what the office attire would be for 2020 on Zoom, but not necessarily <laughs> someone that an eight-year-old girl wants to emulate. But the past few months has been really cool to see and to hear about President-elect Biden's experience of stuttering. There's even some commonalities with myself because my mom also had to go down to the school and yell at some t t teachers. So there's that too. <laughs> um, but he's not only shared his experiences, but he's also brought us with him. And we got to learn about Braden, a young man that President-elect Biden is me mentoring. And it's really cool to see the family in the White House. And I, I'm very honored to be, 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 be here. And thank you for having me. And I look forward to laughing a lot more in 2021 20, and beyond. Great job, Nina. This look, it's stand up. You got to do stand up in an inaugural event, like in the welcome event. That is amazing. I am so jealous. <laughs> Coming up next, we have a, a Caribbean American power couple, Carla and Marlon Hill. Both are proud first generation Americans, active in their community, and passionate about art education. They are ecstatic to see the first Jamaican-American history-making vice president whew, inaugurated on Wednesday. This is Marlon and Carla Hill coming to you from Miami, Florida. We are so excited to be celebrating the 59th presidential inauguration of President-elect Joe Biden and Vice President-elect Kamala Harris. From the shores of Belize to the mountains of Brownstown, Jamaica, the beaches of the U.S. Virgin Islands, the savannah of Trinidad and Tobago, and the jungles of Suriname, we are so excited to be celebrating this special moment with all Caribbean Americans from across these United States of America, along with our neighbors, celebrating this special moment for all of us. What a historic moment, and what an honor to be here on behalf of other immigrant kids like us 
our parents came here, mine from Trinidad and Tobago, Marlon came from Jamaica, and we are here representing the American dream for them. I'm here in my carnival garb because it is a celebration, but it's important to note that carnival's roots started because our ancestors wanted to celebrate their freedom and all of the things that came with that. What an appropriate time to wear my carnival feathers and celebrate this historic moment in our nation's history. You know, we're celebrating Joe and Kamala um, this week as they transition into leadership. But for all of us as Americans, for those who have been working on the front lines, our nurses and our doctors, many of them are Caribbean American as well. For those who have been teaching our children digitally, in colleges and universities, for those who have been securing our nation in the military or our local law enforcement, for those who have been keeping our economy going um, in their small businesses as well, and for our artists who have been keeping our emotions and our sanity alive through their digital expression of their artistry, we just want to thank them from the bottom of our hearts. Exactly. We hope to be together to see those live performances and all of those expressions of art and culture that the United States has sent around the world. And maybe we'll get a carnival in there, right? Yeah, yeah. We we'll have get to get a carnival. carnival. We have to get a carnival. We have to get a carnival. But listen, as we come together for our own national process of healing and moving forward to build our country back and to recover from this p pandemic together. Please continue to be safe. Please continue to be healthy. Wear your masks so, so that we can recover together and come together to celebrate each other. Thank you, Marlon and Carla, for those awesome, powerful words. I love hearing it. And yay, I had no idea what the intention of the carnival was, what the meaning was. So that's amazing. We always learn something new every day. Um, our next performer, I'm very pleased to, uh, I'm very excited to announce him. He is a uh, an Emmy winner and musician. Please help me welcome Darren Chris. I was a junior in high school in San Francisco when uh, one Kamala Harris was elected as the district attorney of that great city where I grew up. And uh, many years later, I was a senior in TV high school when one Joe Biden was reelected for a second term as the vice president of the United States. And boy, have we come a long way since then through all kinds of trials and tribulations, but I have, uh, been in the stands rooting for these two people. I've been a big fan for a long time, so it gives me great joy. It is uh, an absolute privilege and honor um, to be performing for and celebrating these two incredible people as they make history. Um, and uh, I just want to thank them for all their hard work that has uh, gotten us to this very moment. So congratulations to both the Vice President-elect Harris and President-elect Biden. It's got a nice ring to it, doesn't it? Your love lifted me higher than I've ever been lifted before. So keep it up, quench my desire, and I'll be at your side. Forevermore You know your love Keeps on lifting Me higher Higher and higher I said your love it Keeps on lifting me Higher Higher and higher and Now I once Was downhearted Disappointment was my closest friend But then you came and it soon departed And I'll never see his face again And that's why your love keeps on lifting me higher Higher and higher and higher I said your love, love keeps Da, 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 da. 
I love that song. I love that song. It always puts me in a great mood. <laughs> I love that one. Um, up next, we have Atlanta Mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms, who has played such a critical role in Georgia and beyond this year to bring people together. Georgia, maybe you've heard of it. I don't know. It may change twice in one year within months. Let's give her a warm welcome. Hello, I'm Keisha Lance Bottoms, a mother of four and mayor of Atlanta, Georgia, the cradle of the civil rights movement in America and home to our late great hero, Congressman John Lewis. Georgia, like America, has forged a new path. We flipped blue in November and now we are sending two promising Democratic senators to Washington. This year's election cycle has reminded me of just how far we have come. When I was growing up, mayors had a certain pedigree, but my mother stood for sometimes 16 hours a day, shampooing and curling other people's hair in her hair salon. She stood on her feet so that I could have a seat at the table. This is a moment for all Americans to have a seat at the table, regardless of who they are or where they come from. Our nation's rich diversity gives us strength. Joe Biden and Kamala Harris will fight every day to ensure that all Americans get the opportunity to live up to their God-given potential. This inauguration is happening amidst a daunting national crisis. Hundreds and thousands of Americans have lost their lives to COVID-19. Millions more are suffering from the economic destruction of the pandemic. Inflamed divisions are testing our democracy's strength. This is a moment for reflection, but it's also a moment of vast promise and hope. It's time to unify the country, to heal, to forge a united path toward a brighter future. Joe and Kamala are the right leaders for this moment. They'll unite us, not divide us. They'll work tirelessly to find real solutions to the challenges of our times. They'll make sure that all Americans are heard. The theme, America United, will guide this week's inauguration activities. We're embarking on a new national journey to restore the soul of America. The inauguration will showcase the American people's diversity, resilience, and heroism. It'll highlight our commitment to come together and rebuild Let's all resolve to join in that journey of renewal. There's no challenge beyond the reach of a united America. I'm so happy and so relieved that this day has come. I am so happy and so relieved that Georgia exists. <laughs> Up next, we have a fantastic musical guest for you. Four time Grammy nominated. It's the one and only Black Pumas. They'll be singing colors for us tonight. To President elect Joe Biden and Vice President elect Kamala Harris, we're looking forward to a new sense of optimism, unity, and peace for all American people. This next song is Colors. Thank you for having us. To the morning sky first Baby blue just like we rehearsed When I get up off this ground I shake leaves back down To the brown, 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 brown Till I'm clean I'm headed to town, town, town in style With all my faded colors right on All my faded colors, yes 
Pumas, I love you. That was amazing. Thank you so much. Um, I hope all of you have enjoyed this program. We are almost at the end of it. We do have one more speaker left, but last but not least, obviously, we have an awesome guest to close this out. Um, he's a Democratic member of the United States House of Representatives and I would also like to point out that she is the first Asian American to be elected to Congress from New York. Please welcome Grace Meng. Thank you so much. That was an awesome performance. Good evening, everyone. And thank you to all of you for joining us tonight as we celebrate and reflect on our nation's diverse history and honor all those that fought for it and who continue to fight. My story is so similar to the story of so many Americans across this country. My grandma was the first one in our country, in our family, to come to this country. She worked as a housekeeper for many years, and later on, my parents joined her in New York. And they worked in a restaurant for most of my childhood, and later on became small business owners and had a restaurant of their own. I never thought that I would run for office. I never really saw anyone in government or in positions of leadership that looked like me or who had a similar background as me. This year's Biden-Harris victory belongs to every single American, but it is a special testament to the unprecedented turnout from communities of color across this country on election day, from our black communities, Latino, Asian American and Pacific Islanders, Native Americans. Uh, these are communities that came out in full force 
force in unprecedented numbers. And at the same time, they strengthened the coalitions that we've been building for years. Uh, I want to say a special thank you to the first person or the first generation of immigrants from your family that came to the United States of America so that you and I could be here today to celebrate and to practice democracy. These stories uh, are also the story of our vice president elect, Kamala Harris, the daughter of an Indian mother and a Jamaican father who moved to the United States to pursue their educational dreams. Vice President-elect Harris's experience is the experience of an increasingly multicultural America. Her trailblazing career, which saw her become the first woman, the first black and the first South Asian American elected to be vice president has its roots in the civil rights movement of the 1960s and 70s and the family, friendships and communities that helped shape her life. Much like myself, she was taught to embrace her diverse heritage, creating values that paved the way for her and future generations of leaders. Without further ado, it is my tremendous honor and privilege to introduce to you our special guest tonight, our next Vice President of the United States of America, Kamala Harris. Thank you, Grace, and thank you for your leadership on behalf of the people you represent and all Americans. So hello to everyone. I'm so excited to officially welcome you to the 59th presidential inauguration. We are here not only to celebrate and mark the start of a new administration, but to honor the work you have done, from the primaries to the general election, right up to this very moment. From Zoom grassroots fundraisers to union meetings on Google Meet to our drive-in rallies, you were there every step of the way. And on the eve of this inauguration, the president-elect and I thank you for all you have done for our country. We would not be here without you. And I also would not be here without the generations of Americans who struggled and sacrificed to open up opportunity in our country. I stand on their shoulders. And as I've said before, while I may be the first woman to serve as vice president, I will not be the last. So to all of the young people watching this, Dream with ambition, lead with conviction, and see yourselves as future leaders, as the very best of our country, because that is who you are. Of course, even as we celebrate, we must remember the work, the fight that lies ahead, the fight to save lives and beat this pandemic, the fight to rebuild our economy so it works for working people, the fight to root out systemic racism and combat our climate crisis and strengthen the, the democracy we all cherish. Make no mistake, the road ahead, it won't be easy. But America is ready, and so are Joe and I. It is the honor of my life to be your next vice president. And I look forward to working with you to rebuild our country in a way that lifts up all Americans. Thank you. <laughs> 